All right, so we got another event in the books, 281 down. Lots of, lots of takeaways that we can talk about. But here's the deal. The biggest question that is always going to be on the minds of UFC fans and the UFC organization, always, always, is going to be who is Connor fighting next. If Connor is not booked for a fight, everyone is going to be speculating on who that's going to be. And there are always going to be a kind of rotating group of people where, oh, well, that fight makes sense, that fight makes sense, that fight makes sense. But things have changed now. Things have changed in a big way, in a way that I actually have not heard anyone else talk about. Uh, and so I'm going to lay out what these considerations are for the UFC, what the landscape is. And I'll tell you 100% exactly who Connor should fight and why. And I don't think there's going to be a, a, a lot of room to kind of haggle on this. You know, I mean, there's always going to be a few, you know, there, there won't be like one, but there is one that makes the most sense. That'll be the best fight that you can blow an event up around in an in incredible fashion. And in my opinion, he has one other competitor that, that makes sense. But we're going to talk about that, okay? Now, real quick, if you have never subscribed to the channel, but you've watched more than one of my videos, that's the deal we met here. Hand, that's a, that's a, that's a, a verbal hand, or a nonverbal handshake that we're making. If you, watch, if you watch my videos, you subscribe. That's how you pay for the, I mean, that's it. Like, I'm doing it for free. I'm do, putting out the effort. I'm not asking for money, dude. You just have to click the button, okay? You can just click it and then never think about it ever again. It just gives you the right to watch any of my content, like, forever, you know? That uh, seems like a fair deal, and I love you guys for it. Thank you. Also, if you don't mind liking the video, it is very helpful. The, every time I ask you guys, it's, it's overwhelming. I'm very grateful. Every time I actually make a point to say, like, listen, you guys, it really helps me out when you guys like the video. It, I, I, it's... I'm overwhelmed by the response. Thank you guys for that. And I will, again, ask you to like the video if you don't mind. Anyway, so, uh, and tell me what you think about this, actually. This should, this should be a very interactive uh, conversation, given that everyone wants to know who Connor is going to fight, and everyone will have an opinion on uh, who it should be. But I'm going to make a, uh, I'm going to go ahead and make like a, a passionate plea for the direction that this should go, because I think it's the right thing to do, and I think it's the biggest fight, okay? So first off, let me say this. Okay, this is a really important point to walk into this conversation with. Every single time, with no exceptions, that Connor has been put into a fight from the, the first fight that he was in in the UFC to the most recent one, okay, has been a setup where the UFC is matchmaking considering how they can best set Connor up for what? For a title shot, okay? That is just what it is. Every time that they put someone in there, unless it's unless it is an actual title shot at the time, okay. Other than that, the person that they put on the other side of the octagon is someone that they like the matchup with because they're trying to set Connor up for a title shot. Okay, there might be a bigger fight potentially than the person that they put on the other side, but if that bigger fight poses more risk to Connor in terms of his ability to win, then in some cases they're probably not going to make that fight, right? Because they want Connor to fight for the title. They would love for Connor to defend a title at some point, you know? It's pretty crazy to consider that Connor's never defended his title. But nonetheless, okay, at some point they would like that. But until Connor has the belt, it's not something they need to worry about. What they need to strategize around is how to best set him up for title shots, and that has never changed, okay? Well, now that is different, okay? It's different now because Connor is older, he is so wealthy. He is so wealthy that he does not have the same the same kind of um, you know predictability about him. You know where the UFC like Johnny Hendricks. I just learned this. Johnny Hendricks. He's a police officer in Texas right now. Thank you for your service, Johnny Hendricks. I didn't know that. And by the way, if uh, someone knows Johnny Hendricks, let him know that I would love to do a ride along with him. And I'm totally serious about that. Like I, I you know I don't know where he's at in Texas, but I'll come. I'll do a ride along with him. And you know if shit gets out of hand, dude. You could have a worse guy on the ride along. You could have a worse guy on the ride along. I'll be able to, you know, potentially add some value. Let's go smash some suspects, son. I'm just kidding. I'm joking. I'm joking. But Johnny Hendricks is a cop now. Okay. Now, why is that relevant? Because my point is like these guys, need, they need money. You know what I mean? Like the, the vast majority of these guys do not have the kind of money where they don't need the UFC, right? Like, I mean, all these guys need the UFC with like one exception, Connor, right? Like Connor, Connor has so much money. He has so much money coming in all over the place. He genuinely doesn't need the UFC. And you know, like there are guys who have money that, you know, I'm sure Izzy has enough dough that he could just walk as long as he's smart with his money. Kamaru, people like that. 
but they don't have enough money to where if the UFC offers them a UFC contract bout agreement for however much, few million bucks, that that's, that that's not going to be incredibly compelling to draw them back into the sport. Okay, for Connor, he's so rich that they actually could get to a point where the money is not that important to him, right? And he's the only one who is like that, okay? And the reason why that's notable, again, is because you can't bank on two fights from him now. You know, like where before it's like, okay, if he wins or he loses, he's coming back, right? Like he's coming back. And, and that was, I would say that was the case for Connor all the way up until now, where you knew even if he loses, he's still going to fight again. You don't know that anymore. I really, I, I mean, I, I would love to say, everybody knows. I love Connor McGregor. I love Connor McGregor. I would love just nothing more than to see Connor fight a million times. Okay. It's the most exciting thing that happens in the sport, except for maybe one other thing that we're going to, uh, you know, throw out in the, in the near future of this video. Okay. But at this point, Connor is not a surefire, you know, guy who's going to keep on fighting. He's just not. And so when you're making this matchup, you have to consider like, okay, we really need to maximize value for this fight. The matchup we make here has to be a blockbuster because it, like before you're investing, you know, you're like if you do uh, whatever fight, you win with Cowboy, it's not going to sell as well as fill in the blank, someone who might be a bigger fight, but it's a fight that he can win and we're investing the money that we would have made on the other one in what we think we'll make on the next one. Okay, well, you can't, I don't think you could do that anymore. So you got to maximize value on this one. I mean, you don't want to give him someone that you think he is, is a really bad match. You know, you just throw him in there with like Kamaru Usman or someone who stylistically is a nightmare for him. But also, your primary objective should be a, a blockbuster fight for him. Not a tune-up, not whatever, a blockbuster fight. And the way I see it, the way I see it, you also want him, obviously, to have a chance to win, right? And the way I see it is, there is no conversation here. The fight to make is Chandler versus Connor. Chandler versus Connor is the fight to make now, Okay. Chandler is a star, a huge star, and a star who not only is excellent on the mic, will do a, a, a ridiculous job building that fight up, a ridiculous job building that fight up. But more than any other fighter in the history of the sport, I will say this now, okay? Now we have a big enough sample. We've got five fights now. That is a big enough sample size to say the following thing that I'm going to say. There has never been a fighter who you can know for absolute 100% sure is going to go in there and absolutely go balls to the wall, breaking shit in a way that like, it like defies logic how hard he's fighting, how, how exciting his fights are. Gaethje is the only competition, and you saw what that looks like, but Gaethje is capable of, you know, you could almost say like Gaethje is capable of measured, measured violence. Like, Dude, Chandler is in a fucking out-of-control tornado hurricane of violence. And I say that in the most complimentary possible way. That first round of that Dustin Poirier fight was insane. Like, it was insane. It's insane. There's no other way to even describe it. It was insane. He was going 100% from minute, from second one, trying to decapitate Poirier with every shot that he threw. He took the kind of punishment towards the end of the round after, you know, he's winning that round handily, smashing Dustin, almost getting him out of there. Mo probably every other fighter is, is going to get out of there except, you know. And then he gets his nose shattered in a million pieces and then somehow, and he comes out, wins the next round, spitting blood, you know, th blood down his fucking throat, spitting it out on his opponent. Like, dude, he is a is an absolute 100% certainty to bring that kind of fire to a big fight because he's done it every single time. He's done it every single time. Every single round of every single fight that he's been in has been an absolute barn burner. There hasn't been a second of one of his fights that was not a clash of violence, like a sheer clash of violence. There's no measuring out. There's no, not, it's just, it's like blood and guts violence at hyperspeed the entire time he's fighting. Most guys who have explosive, you know, ability like him can't last like that either. And so you think about it like this, dude. 
Can you fucking imagine what it's going to feel like knowing what he's come? Like, there's no, like, there's no question that that's what's going to come into the octagon on his side. And the other guy has no choice. Like, you're, don't you want to see Connor fight against that? Like, don't you want to see how Connor handles that tornado of violence that is 100% coming without any shred of doubt? As certain as I am of that, I'm wearing a fucking yellow shirt right now. You, we are all just as certain that. Chandler is going to come out and tornado violence Connor. Don't you want to see how Connor handles that? You want to see if, like, force Connor into a firefight like that? Let's see if Connor Blitzkrieg knocks him out. Let's see if fucking Chandler knocks out Connor. Like, give, like, Connor's the most exciting guy in the sport. Chandler is going to make the fight more exciting than anyone can fucking imagine. It'll be like no one's ever seen Connor in a firefight like that. Not really, you know? Like, obviously, the Nate Diaz fights, there was, were dog fights. But it was like, when Connor was fresh, he was 100. Like, dude, there was no, there's, there was no, no match at all. When Connor was fresh at the beginning of those fights, especially in the second fight when he was fresh the first two rounds, he, dude, that was, that, that was not close. Like, Connor's skill and speed and, and precision, it was a not close. Then he got tired and it turned into a slugfest dog fight for the next two rounds. Very impressive. But like I said, dude, let's see Connor in a full throttle firefight from minute one, dude. It'll be insane. It'll be insane. And do it at 170. If everybody's, oh, you should not come back to 55. I Sure. I know. Do it at 170. Do it at 70. And by the way, if there's, been, if there's a guy who deserves that fight more than Chandler, show up to me, dude. The guy, like, seriously. If you can earn, if, if, if like what the, you know, if what we're doing here is a person can earn a thing like the Conor comeback fight through whatever the UFC is hoping to get from their fighters in their best case scenario, who the fuck deserves it more than Chandler? Honestly, he went and did the press conference after the Poirier fight with his nose smashed in a thousand pieces. And he did the, pre- not only did he, did he show up and do the fight and put on a show that is, I mean, what, what, what else can you even say? He did the fucking press conference with his face looking like he got run over by a truck, dude. He has done everything the UFC's asked at a multiple. And the reason why the UFC asked him to do it is to entertain us, dude. And so he's delivered for us times a thousand. Think about that fight. Like, honest to God, put yourself in the position of Connor and him walking in. I'll say this too. So in the, I don't know if you guys have seen the clip. It's on, it's on a reel that I just did. But that Connor, I'm sorry, uh, Dustin after the fight went to, went to Chandler and was like, hey man, respect. He's like, I was afraid to fight you, dude. He's like, I'm serious. I was scared to fight you. And, you know, but look, I'm, I'm grateful for it. There's no, there, without fear, there's no, there's, no, there's no bravery. I know exactly what he means by that. Of course. It's like, and I said, and was I fucking live or... Uh, I think I might've just said it to the guys that I was hanging out with, but like, think about what it's like walking into the octagon when you're about to fight Michael Chandler, or if you're about to fight Dustin Poirier, it's actually exactly the same on both sides. It's like, you know, you go into a fight with a person, these guys, it's like most people, there is a scenario where you can win without getting fucked up, you know, like where you can win without getting seriously like hurt, you know? Like you, there. I mean, you're, you're like you're you're prepared to be hurt, but you know that there is a way that you could win without having to be hurt. Where against Poirier and Chandler, you, wrong, dude. You're getting fucking hurt, dude. Like hurt bad. Like you, there's you know if you have your hand raised, you got hurt. If you lost, you really got hurt. Either way, you're coming out fucked up, hurt. And that's what Dustin meant. You know, he's like I was scared to fight him because he knows like. Like they're again, like it's not like Chandler's not gonna have an off night, dude. You know, he might not win necessarily, but he's not gonna have an off night. Like he's going to bring violence at you that, I mean, that, you know, it's not boxing, dude. Even if you block shots, you got punched in the shoulder, dude, with it. I mean, by, by a nuclear shot on a tiny little, like you're getting fucking hurt. You're going to eat leg kicks. You're going to get punched in the face. Like it's like, and so. Because he's so consistent, you know, like think about Connor coming in and Connor knows that's coming. Like Connor knows that's coming. And Chandler's going in there to fight Connor where you have everything to win, dude. Everything to win.
And so that, oh my God, give it to me, dude. Just give it to me. And the UFC, well, I mean, that that as a headliner is going to do, I, like, because because at the end of the day, when, you're, when you got Conor fighting, you're selling an event around Conor, okay? Well, so when people are like, wait, who's Conor fighting to now? You know, the casual fan finds out what to think of a fight from their hardcore friends, okay? Now, us, you, and me, we know exactly what's coming. And so when our friend goes, wait, so who's Conor fighting? How are you going to communicate that? You're going to be like, dude, Connor is stepping into an inferno of fucking violence tonight. Someone is going fucking down. As certain as anyone has ever been about anything, someone's going fucking down, dude. And then you start showing them highlights of fucking of Chandler's fights. And it's like, look at this is who he's fighting. This is fucking who he's fighting, dude. And they're going to go, holy shit. And they're all going to buy it, dude. Because the show is Connor, and it's like, all right, well, who's, you know, and and in a lot of cases, it doesn't even matter who Connor's fighting. In this case, it'll matter, dude. I honestly don't even want to say who the only other one that makes sense is, but I will because it's Mosfidal. It's the only other one that makes sense, but Chandler makes more sense. It'd be a fucking barn burner, dude. Give it to me. Give me that fucking fight. Give me that fucking fight. Give it to me.